we are on a quest. On a mission to find the native plant and animal species of southeastern Arizona. Hey everyone, you're watching the Green Dream Project. Jim here. And Jessica. This is another Native Plants and Animals edition about the creosote bush. And if I get yanked away off the screen, it's because I currently have crew tied up to my waist. Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> okay. Let's talk about the creosote bush. Creosote is a perennial evergreen shrub and it's native to the southwestern United States and Mexico. Aren't they all? Everything we're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> this plant grows in desert environments up to about 5,000 feet elevation. We're getting kind of close on that, huh? We're close, yeah. <laughs> right now. They'll be usually around 3 to 10 feet tall. They can get up to 13 feet sometimes. Probably a medium sized one. Yeah, probably yeah, probably about four feet. Four eh? feet. Four feet. <laughs> That's the official the height measurement by my eyes. This bush has these small dark green leaves. And like I mentioned, it's evergreen. So it keeps its leaves year round. It will usually only shed the leaves in times of severe drought. <laughs> <laughs> He's on to a scent. <laughs> the plant also makes these small yellow flowers and the flowers will turn into these little fuzzy white fruit capsules. They're really cute little fuzzies. <laughs> cute fuzzies. She's all about the cute fuzzies. I'm around my waist and around your legs. He's gonna just like run off and I don't know, both are gonna be like, ah! <laughs> If he sees a jackrabbit or something, we're If he sees trouble. a jackrabbit, we're done. So while the plant can reproduce through the seeds, a lot of times it's hard for the seeds to germinate and for the young plants to survive when there's not a lot of water in the desert. So it can also reproduce by cloning itself. So what that means is that one plant, as it gets older, you know, branches will die off, but then the crown will split and eventually the old crown will die, but there's this new crown and it develops sort of this colony of plants that are really the same organism. They're all from the same seed, but it just kind of clones itself. Yeah, and it's the cool kind of cloning too, not like the lame Ben Riley Spider-Man clone saga. If you don't know, look it up. Ben. <laughs> There's actually this one clone colony in the Mojave Desert that is considered to be one of the oldest living organisms on Earth. They estimated it to be about 11,700 years old. And it's just this ring of creosote bush. So of course these plants are well suited to a desert environment. It is actually considered to be the most drought tolerant plant species in North America. Usually when people think of drought tolerant plants or desert plants, I think they think of like cacti, maybe not a bush. Right. But this thing is boss. It can actually survive up to two years, two years without any water. That's crazy. The water loss on this bush is reduced by having small leaves with a waxy coating. And it only photosynthesizes in the morning 
when the humidity is at its highest. Yeah, since the, the leaves will open up, you know, to photosynthesize, it can lose moisture that way. So that's pretty smart. Obviously, you know, it's only getting that photosynthesis during that time, but I mean, it's a desert environment, so it's got plenty of sunlight. It's a smart plant. <laughs> <laughs> we got sunlight in abundance here. Water, mm, not that's so much. Now the root systems of this plant is so efficient that it'll actually create dead zones around it because it just sucks up so much of that moisture. So definitely be careful when placing this around other plant species. It's probably going to get outcompeted by this thing. If you'll notice, there are black spots on the branches. Those spots are actually part of a microbial community that helps give nutrients to the plant. Well, the creosote bush serves some important functions in the desert ecosystem. For one, it can trap fine soil particles like dust that's flying through and it traps organic matter and that can help improve the soil. It also provides shelter and shade for animals. For example, the desert tortoise likes to dig burrows around the base. Also, some types of kangaroo rats will make their burrows around it. We know quite a bit about that. Lots of kangaroo rat mounds around here. Yeah. And it also provides food for some animals like jackrabbits or other small mammals. This plant is associated with over 60 types of insects, including 22 bee species that only feed on the flower of the creosote bush. Well, that's incredible. <laughs> yeah. So it's really important to insects. Uh, one of those insects is called a creosote gall midge. Sometimes you'll see on creosote bushes these kind of ball-like, they're called galls, that's created by that gall midge. So of course, like a lot of uh, desert plants, native people have found uses for it. It's been incredibly beneficial to human beings. Find creative uses for a lot of these desert plants and creosote is no exception. Firewood has been uh, a big use for it. Livestock feed, thatching for roofs. The charcoal from the burn plant actually has a blue-green type hue and it's been used for coloring and tattoos. That's cool. As a medicinal herb, this thing has been known as chaparral. Of course, the Native Americans had used this to treat a wide range of ailments. And there's a compound in here that has been used as a food preservative. The creosote is home to an insect known as the creosote lax scale, which coats itself in a secretion that when heated, liquefies, and then acts as a glue. Archaeological evidence suggests that ancient desert peoples used this lac to seal lids on food jars. Now the creosote bush has a distinctive odor to it and it's particularly strong after a rain. That's kind of where it gets its name creosote from. This is kind of a smoky, earthy smell to it. <laughs> right, what do you think? It smells. Hmm. Smoky. I think I'm smelling part of your hands though too. Not sure your hands, hands are smoky. smoky? <laughs> I like it. Yeah, no. It's good. Kind of a, sh a fresh, but earthy smell. And oh, yeah. people actually hang bundles of this in their showers to give it this like fresh desert rain smell. If you ever have a chance to get out into the desert after a rain where there's a bunch of creosote, wow, that smell is just incredible. It's amazing. Yeah, so people really like that smell. I didn't realize people actually sold bundles of creosote for that purpose, but uh, a friend of ours, Pam Price, from the channel Midlife Prices, She's selling some bundles of creosote on her Etsy page. For anyone who is interested to get to smell the creosote and get that desert rain smell in your shower, that would be a great thing to pick up, I think. So if you're curious about the creosote, I encourage you to check out Midlife Prices and Pam's Etsy page if you want to get your hands on some creosote or check it out. And we're going to leave a link to their channel and the Etsy page in the description below. Well, thanks for joining us today and learning about the creosote with us. Definitely one of the most fascinating desert plants that I've come across. It's definitely one of my favorites. So thank you very much for joining us. I hope you learned something. If you enjoyed it, please give this video a thumbs up. Definitely share because people want to know about the creosote bush.
Also, there's a little giveaway still going on. Check that out down below. If you haven't subscribed, please do, because there's so much going on. Something always going on over here. And you can check out even more on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Hope to see you there. Thanks so much for watching, everyone. We really appreciate it. Catch you on the next video. Bye.